talk the guy go banging on his door you can throw your hands up you can beat the clock yeah. you can move a mountain you can break rocks you can be a master don't wait for luck dedicate yourself and you go find yourself Hello everybody, this is Jeremy for Gaming here and I have for you episode number 4 of the New York Yankees franchise here on Be Wild Cat2's channel on YouTube. And before I get started with the episode, I want to give a big thanks to him. I posted a video on his channel about a month or two ago, and that was just giving an overview of my channel, but this will give you a good idea of what my actual commentary is like in the realm of sports, in this case baseball. So in this game it is going to be the Baltimore Orioles 4-6 and six, against the New York Yankees 4-7. and seven. So far, I've played two of the games so far. One against the Red Sox in opening day. I won that one. And the second one was Sabathia and Verlander in Detroit at Comerica Park. And that one I lost. So, yeah, pretty much we're 1-1 one one when I play. And then the rest, the, uh, the computer does not do very well for me. So we'll, uh, hopefully we'll be able to win this one. And this game, I'm going to be pitching with Hiroki Kuroda, as you'll see the starters in a moment. And here they are, Miguel Gonzalez. Not a great season so far in the first couple starts. And Hiroki Kuroda, who's been pretty good for me. So this is the first time pitching with Kuroda. The first two games I pitched with Sabathia. And yeah, so this game is the first pitcher I'm pitching with different from uh, Sabathia. So there you see the manager, Buck Showalter. And here is the lineup that they'll be presenting. You have Casilla, Benamid, uh, Marquecas, Davis, Jones, Raymond, Hardy, Weeders, and Machado to top it off. So now here we will have our starter, as you saw before, Hiroki Kuroda known for his control, and hopefully you can show that in this game. So to lead off the game here, we will have Alexi Casilla. This pitch, he will hit up the middle, and we will have Mason Williams out there getting it in, and actually, Curtis Granderson is injured for me, so that's who's playing center. So a couple things make it seem a little confusing with some changes. So now the second batter, Wilson Bedemi, trying to get the double play is Teixeira. He goes to second. That will be an out. And it looks like he says safe, but he uh, reverses the call and makes it a out. And Buck Schulter will come out there and try to argue, though it was actually lost in the transfer, so it is an out. Probably should have stepped on first and then threw it to second, though we got the sure out at second first. So now we have Marcakis up on a 1-2 count. This pitch, he will hit right at Kuroda. And I throw it on to second, thinking that it was a grounder initially, though it was a line drive, pretty good play, good... Uh, instincts by Kuroda and there you will see his stats from last game seven innings two earned runs and no decision so good for him and now we all have Davis I believe and he will get hit by the pitch he got plunked and that looked like the slider on a two strike pitch just trying to get him swinging there nothing intentional and that just got away from Kuroda and that will hit him so now we have a two and two count to Jones can he get out of the inning here and this pitch is hit to deep center field Mason has the speed can he get it yes he will so Williams with a nice running catch at the wall, and the Yankees will escape from this unharmed. Tied at zero now with the Baltimore Orioles getting one hit from that inning. So now moving on to the Yankees' bomb half here. The lineup that we'll be presenting is Suzuki, Jeter, Cano, Teixeira, Euclid, Gordon, Pugue, Cervelli, and Williams. A couple of question marks at the bottom of that lineup. Watch some of the earlier videos of the franchise to find that out. I don't want to explain everything right now, though Gordon and Pugue were both additions in a trade that I got. So now we will be facing against Miguel Gonzalez, as you saw earlier. And now we will have Suzuki leading it off for us. This pitch on a two-strike count. He fights it off. That's one thing that he's really good at, is fighting off those two-strike pitches and just getting a nice contact on them and hitting it into center or good timing, whatever you can do. Jeter 0-2 count, same idea. He can get the other way, two of the best hitters of all time, Suzuki and Jeter, back-to-back -back that one-two punch, both fighting off two-strike pitches, Hitting them just out of fielder's reach. Nice line drive hits. Now we have Knope. What can he do here? This pitch is skied out to right field. Pretty routine play for Marcakis. And here, a little bit idiotically, we will tag up. And Marcakis, with a great arm that throws a little bit offline, though the third baseman will tag out Suzuki. So a little bit of a foolish move. Hopefully that won't come back to bite us in the end. So here you'll see a replay. And that was just a bullet a little bit offline, though... Not bad enough to throw it totally off. So now later on we have Teixeira. Can he continue the inning? This pitch he will try to check his swing, though he does go around on the changeup. So not very good there. We actually do not get anything from that inning. A little disappointed with that. So we have Reimold up. The splitter inside he will swing and miss on. So good job by Kuroda there. Later on we have Euclid up in the bottom second. 1-2 count curveball. He swings and misses at that one. So... 
Uh, Eucalyst leading off the inning for us. Not very good there. Now we will have Machado on a 1 and 2 count. Kuroda, this is a strikeout also. That is a high and away slider. And Machado will just catch air on that one. So back to back, uh, or back to back to back highlight reel uh, with the strikeouts. Can he get another one here? Yes, he will. So um, definitely lighting up the game here. Both pitchers turning, uh, turning in a good game so far. But, you know, there's still a lot of time left in the game. So a lot of strikeouts going so far. Now we have Williams up on the third. This pitch, he will strike out looking on the slider. Really, the pitcher's doing great so far. Tons of strikeouts to two and two counts to Suzuki. This one is a blooper to left field. Will it be an out? And no, Rymel down there in left field will miss it. And Suzuki was running hard from first to second. And that will go down as an E7. So we have Jeter up two and one count. This pitch, he will hit into pretty relative uh, shallow, not shallow, deep uh, center field. And that will be the routine play for Jones. So, after all those strikeouts, a little bit of disruption. Now, Kuro's pitching against Jones. Can he get one here? Yes, he will on the low and away slider. So, Kuroda really doing fantastic after that bad first inning. Lots of strikeouts for him. Not exactly known for his strikeouts, though doing good so far. Now, I have to share up on a 1-2 count. What can he do with this pitch? We'll see from Gonzalez. And this will be another strikeout by the curveball. And really just a pitcher's duel right now. Well, it looks like at least... So now we have Kuroda to Weeders. Two outs. This pitch he hits high and deep right center field. Williams back. Is it going to get out of here? Yes, it will. It is a home run solo shot for Matt Weeders. And Kuroda was on a roll. He just left a fastball up there. And that is not very good. He was getting tons of strikeouts and just all. I mean, I don't think they got a hit since the first inning. Really just fantastic for Kuroda until that pitch. And hopefully it doesn't throw him off. At least it was a solo shot, and hopefully we can reciprocate. At least get one run in the next inning, if not in the innings to follow. So here you'll see the replay. That was perfect timing, or near-perfect timing by Weeders. That was, I wouldn't say a no-doubter, though. That was definitely a good home run for him. Not too much doubt there. So now hopefully we can try to uh, answer. And now the next hitter, we have Machado. Oh, and two count. Kuroda will answer back with a strikeout. So now with that, the Yankees will come to bat. And to lead off the inning, we have D. Gordon, one of our new acquisitions. This pitch, he will lace into right field. And that will be caught by Nick Markakis. Fantastic play. Pretty good fielder. Not even pretty good. He's really good. And out there in right field, he make a nice place. Now next here, we have Pugue on a 2-1 count. He will hit this one up the middle. Line drive. Nice clean hit for him into center field. So another one of our younger players. Phenoms, I would say. And that's good. So now two outs. Puke found his way to second. And this pitch, Williams will hit into high and pretty much not too deep center field. And that will be an easy out for Jones once again. So Yankees are losing still 1-0. And the Orioles will go back to the top of their lineup. So let's see how Kuroda can do. Guy on first. One and two count. This pitch will be hitting to right field. Ichiro, with one of the best arms in the league, will throw it into third base. And no one will get to third on that throw. <laughs> so now on a 1-2 and two count. Davis up. What can he do here? He will hit this into center field. Williams uh, will not make up the play there. And now the runners are off. And that will score a run. That is not good playing by Williams. In the last game, we had Pugue who made a bunch of errors in center field. Now we have Williams making an error in center field. Not very good there. Not making the clean plays. And those are the plays that you got to make. Williams, a youngster. You got to just get yourself up from that, though. So now this pitch is hit up the middle. Well, another play to Williams, actually. Can he throw it home? Will this be in time? The throw, it is not in time. Not enough, as he'll be safe. And now the Orioles really picking up the runs. It's 4 nothing. And this pitch is hit to deep left field. Pugue back. Can he get it? Yes, he can. A fantastic fine running catch by Pugue. And that will end the inning. So Baltimore strikes in the 6th. 4 nothing. They are winning now. Can the Yankees answer back this inning? I really hope they do because, I mean, they're going to run out of time soon. So now we'll see the Yankees at the top of their lineup, actually, with one out now. Jeter on one-two count. Can he avoid the strikeout? This pitch he hits to deep left field. Is it enough? Will it clear the fence? And yes, it will. It is a line drive home run that barely got over in that short left field porch. And Jeter actually hit two home runs in opening day, which is pretty surprising. And here with another one. I guess I just like his uh, stance or something. And there you'll see the Yankee captain... Derek Jeter hits another home run. 
I'm the only one that hits good with him because the computer just they make him do bad. I mean, whenever I uh, <laughs> whenever I send the games, he always goes like 0 for 4 or 1 for 5 or something. And so far he has that single earlier, and now this home run where you'll see the replay, a solo shot. So the Yankees have a now 4-1 to deficit to deal with instead of 4-0. The shutout gone for Gonzalez after pitching really well so far. Hopefully he'll get shooken up from that, and we can get some more off of him. So now following Jeter, it's a 3-2 and two count to Cano. Can he do anything with this upcoming pitch? He's 0-2 so far. This pitch, he will swing and miss at the low changeup. That has given me a lot of trouble in that game, if I remember correctly, that changeup. Seriously did a lot of damage to me. That and his curveball, uh, he's been very effective with those pitches. So now with Shara 1 and 2 count, this pitch is a actually ground ball up the middle. And you don't see that too much with Mark Teixeira. Definitely going against the shift there as that was, wow, that's actually surprising. Because he always just pulls and pulls and pulls. So anyway, 0 and 2 count to Euclid. This pitch he swings and misses at the curveball strike 3. So there you go. We end the inning after that home run. Weeders with the home run. Jeter with the home run. Jeter with a very good game so far. And Gonzalez, despite that one home run, having a very good day so far with six strikeouts. And Kuroda definitely has has his fair share of strikeouts additionally. So now we have Weeders up on two. Can he uh, get him out this time? Yes, he will. So after the home run from Weeders before this time, he will get him out and win the battle this time. Unlike last time, it didn't turn out so good. So you'll see his pitch count last inning was 27 pitches, not very good, and 84 total. So definitely I keep an eye on him if he gets into any more trouble. Now 3-2 and two pitch to Machado. That is strike three, slider, and he will just catch air on that one. And Machado will have a long walk back to the dugout on that one. So Kuroda looking pretty sharp so far since that uh, bad couple of innings. And now we have D Gordon up, the new acquisition up again. And now this one, line drive into center field. And Jones will take it in and avoid the extra base hit for D. Gordon, though he'll still get in with a single. D. Gordon known for his speed. He's going to try a steal here against Weeders, one of the better defensive catchers. This is going to be safe. So D. Gordon actually leading the league in stolen bases, if I'm right. So definitely showing off his speed, and that's one of the main reasons why I got him, in addition to replacing Jeter. So when he got to third, 2-0 no counts to really this pitch. He will hit just out of the reach of the third baseman, and that will actually score um, Gordon with ease. So there you go. We are getting within striking distance. 4-2 to two now. like to see that. And now we'll pinch run for Cervelli. We are going to have Nick Punto run for him, who is uh, pretty fast. Definitely faster than Cervelli. So now here he's going to try to steal with 68 overall speed. Definitely a very good pitch to steal on. Just safe, though. If that pitch was a little bit higher, then we probably would have been safe. So luckily enough, we will get in there. Now we have a runner in scoring position. With the tying run at the plate. So now we have Mason Williams up one out. This pitch will get past the catcher. That is a wild pitch. And Williams, uh, not Williams, Punto is going to get to third with ease. And Williams is the one who's batting. My bad. And now can Williams at least get him in? Maybe a fly ball or something. It's a three and two count. And this will be ball for a walk. I'm not with. I'm not great with uh, discipline though. Yeah, <laughs> we get a walk. So now Troy Patton will come in, the lefty. Looks like he's having a good season with seven and two thirds innings. Um, definitely not a huge sample size, though he is doing good to start off the season. So now we have Ichiro up, got that single earlier, and this pitch he will hit, and that will be a four, six to three. No, that is just a ground out fielder's choice, a run scoring fielder's choice. Now we have the captain, Derek Jeter, up, who hit the home run before, gets a pitch he likes, and this will just be out of the shortstop's reach, and that will go down as a single and move Ichiro a second. So now Baltimore in a little bit of trouble here. The Yankees hopefully can take advantage with Robinson Cano coming up. I haven't done great with him. Maybe I can do good here on a 1-2 and two count. Can he avoid the strikeout? No, he cannot. He will be stuck looking. He is striking out a lot for me, honestly. I don't do good with him. I don't know why. So Baltimore with their 2-3-4 coming up. Not very good. We uh, only need one more run to tie it up. And now you'll see Chris Stewart will take over the catching duties with Punto pinch running. So now on a 1-2 and two count, Kuroda, is he still sharp? No, 1-2 and two count, and that is a base hit into center, and that will finish off the day for Kuroda, as you'll see Joe Girardi come to the mounds, and sadly enough, Kuroda will not be able to get much further in this one. Okay start for him, defense didn't exactly help him in this, though that's been a little bit of a rough run for Kuroda. Definitely wish that uh, he didn't give up that solo shot, the being that kind of opens it up. 
and uh, maybe ruined his confidence a little bit. So now Robertson will come in. I have full confidence in him. Maybe a double play ball here, and it will go to Gordon. It is a six to four, three double plays. So it was Gordon to Cano to Teixeira, and that is a double play to end the inning. Looked pretty smooth there, and you'll see the replay. Pretty nice play by Gordon, and he will throw it on to Cano. Instead of Jeter, Cano to Teixeira is Gordon to Cano to Teixeira. <laughs> A little bit of a tongue twister for a second. And that will just get out. Davis, I believe, was hitting. And without a good stretch, that probably would have been safe. So now Pedro Strop will come in. I'm assuming that he is their setup guy. But he does have a terrible ERA, though. Only two in the third inning. So we'll see. Maybe uh, is he on a cold streak here? A three and two count. Teixeira will walk. Ooh, that should have been strike three, it looked like. Though luckily enough, we will get the walk. Taking a lot of those strike threes. So that is, um, I guess, that one went our way. So the dread leadoff walking, see there in the top right, that's pretty funny. So now maybe try to take advantage here. Three and two count to Euclid now having a little bit of trouble with control. And this one we will look at also that that is a strike three, unlike the last time it was a walk. So now the next hitter with one out, Gordon. What can he do with this one? He will hit this one into left field. A seeing eye single. So now it's first and second with one out. Now we have a guy in scoring position. The tying run is in scoring position, people. We have to share at second. Not great speed, though. So now we have Pugh up. 0-2 count. Can you avoid the strikeout? A ton of them today. And that is a high heat. And Pugh will strike out. Not very good there. Striking out a lot in this game. Stewart, who was taking over catching duties, will have a little very, very weak grounder. And to share will hold up with not great speed and such a weak grounder. No, not taking my chances. Now, 2-2 two and two count to Williams. Can you avoid the strikeout? Had a ton today, as I said earlier. This pitch is hit up the middle, and it is to second base, and he'll throw it onto the shortstop at covering second base, and that will end the inning. That is gargantuan for the Orioles. Wow. Terrible by the Yankees. Didn't come in there. Maybe I should have went home with Teixeira, though. He probably would have been out. So an 0-2 count to Jones. Strike three, curveball. Beautiful by beautiful pitch by Robertson really just Just that's what Robertson is known for his strike uh, strikeout curveball and I mean He was a little bit off last year with the control though here. You'll see another one. Just beautiful pitch Love that curveball <laughs> So next hitter hopefully he can uh, make can he strike out the side we have Hardy up I think it looks like and this pitch though will be another seeing eye single and he will throw it into shortstop. And that will be a single. So now with Weeders up, he hit the home run. This pitch is line to Teixeira, and that is an out. So now, the moment of truth. Jim Johnson will come on to try to get the save, and the Yankees have their 1-2-3 up, the top of their lineup. Can they do anything against him? Suzuki up 2-2 two and two count. Can he avoid the strikeout? This pitch is hitting to left field, shallow. Reimold will come up and make the play. So now, you know who's up next, right? We have Derek Jeter, who was three for four so far. Can he come in the clutch again? Can he hit a home run, get an extra base hit? He gets a pitch he likes. This pitch is going to be lined at the first baseman and caught for the out. Wow, that stung. Wow, so now we have Cano up, two outs. First pitch he sees, this pitch is popped up to third base. And it looks like Benamid, I believe, is at third. And this pitch, he will bring in for the out. So a very devastating loss for the Yankees. They had a bunch of opportunities where they could have scored more. They scored three runs, though. They could have done a lot more. I think they had like 10 or 11 hits in this one. Really should have done a lot more. Pitching was not great in this. Robertson was stellar. But, I mean, come on now. That was a very disappointing game. I mean, we didn't do terrible, though, for what for the hits that we got, we definitely should have done a lot better. And that's a problem that the Yankees in general in real life have trouble with, is runners in scoring position with two outs, and that's something that I gotta work on here. Work on the player's clutch and stuff, maybe I should do that in the training attributes. So sadly, the Orioles will take this one, so no more bye-bye birdies in this exhibition game, not even exhibition, uh, what do you call it, regular season game. <laughs> the Yankees had ten hits, one error. They scored three runs, and there you see some notable stats. Though, before we finish off this, we'll take a look here at the highlight reel. And the first highlight is in the top of the fifth. That's how long it took to get this game really going. And Weeders homer to center. And that was a solo shot. That really was the opening silo for the Orioles to really take this one. 
Then we had Gordon lining out to the right fielder, and what was so good about this? Well, a diving play by Marcakis. Fantastic. I feel like I always get robbed. Whenever they dive, they always make it. You know, that's happened like a few times so far. But I don't want to whine about it. <laughs> so now we will have a line drive base hit into center field, and Williams will not come up with it, and that will drive in a run or two runs, I believe, actually. And then we have Jones hitting the sack fly. I think the other one was actually one RBI, my bad. We have Jones hitting the sack fly to left field. Puke with actually a pretty good arm, but that will not be enough to get the runner out at home. And that will score another run. That will be Baltimore's third run. So next we will have the fourth run and the final run. That was the ground ball into center field. Another play that Williams would not get the out at home. So then we have Jeter home ring to center. Trying to make some noise, get the Yankees excited. Though they'll end up losing ultimately. They will still uh, get that solo shot there. Pretty good trying to energize the team, being the captain and everything, you know. Cervelli then grounding it into a seeing eye single there in between short and third. That will be an RBI, so <laughs> that sounded funny. I just scratched my nose, whatever. Um, so then Cano struck out. That is crucial to the game. Tons of strikeouts on both sides. Very disappointing for both sides at many times also. And then we have Davis grounding out into the 6-4-3 double play. Beautiful play by the infield as they turn that one. And that was crucial to the game also, though now we will have the most important play of the game was Cano popping out to the third baseman, and that ended the game. That is crucial. <laughs> So that will pretty much finish up the game portion of this episode. And if you're probably well, you're probably new to the channel, for most of you, some of you came from here when I post a video from another time. Though I am going to be showing, if you don't know the series, I show each player's stats. And I'm probably going to take this out of the um, the franchise series probably in a a few episodes, maybe. Um, just so it shortens the video by a decent amount. So I don't know if it's boring or not. Leave a comment, maybe. You know, just let me know. If I should keep this in or take it out, if you guys care about it or not, you know, just so you can see a little more like an inside view of how they actually did. So now we're going into the extra stats. Jeter had that home run. Then the RBIs belong to Suzuki, Jeter, and Cervelli, as you saw. Williams with the one error, pretty important to the game, obviously. And then Gordon, Pugue, and Punto, all with stolen bases. Average day for Kuroda. Definitely could have done better, though we'll take it, I guess. But we ended up losing this one, so that kind of sucked. And then we have the next game, which I'm going to simulate. We have Michael Pineda pitching a very good game, it looks like. It looks like we got a walk-off win, actually. There you'll see Gordon, 1 for 4. Then we have Suzuki playing right field. He was 0 for 4. Cano was 1 for 3. Uh, looks like a decent game for him, along with Teixeira, 1 for 4. Or 3, that is. Pugue, Jeter, and Francisco, all 0 for 3. Punto with a good game, it looks like. He was 2 for 3. And Stewart doing the catching duties. He was 0 for 1. Euclid playing catcher. Wow, that's okay. <laughs> he was 0 for 1. Cano had a home run. Cano had an RBI also, obviously. Stewart with an error, despite being a good fielding catcher normally. And Gordon with another stolen base, really showing off that speed there. Pineda with a gem. 12 strikeouts in 8 innings pitched. And then Jabba with a scoreless inning. So if you don't know how this series works, I basically do maybe about one ser uh, one game per series. Like, I skipped the Cleveland series because nothing really poked at me. I might skip this series. I'll simulate it. Though it looks like the next game is probably going to be Pettit against Hudson. So that'll be pretty cool. And, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this little bit of a franchise episode. And I hope you guys enjoy my commentary. Any suggestions or anything, please leave them in the comments. And there you see our contact. We have JG, the Juniper Gaming Twitter. Capital J, capital G, Juniper Football, that's for the JFL. Check that out, too, on our channel. The JFL is a huge series. We have our website also, and also an email. So look into that also. In terms of the series that we do on Juniper Gaming, in terms of baseball, we have Derek Lloyd, a center fielder that I have wrote to the show. Yankees franchise, which you see right now, uh, what you saw before. The In terms of football, we have the JFL, the Juniper Football League that we made up. That's a really cool series that I'm excited to really get going. It's not fully up yet. Though, I'll uh, look into that in the JFL intro playlist I have. Pokemon, we have Let's Play Pokemon Emerald, Let's Play Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness, and we also have Let's Play Sonic Unleashed and the Simpsons Hit and Run Walkthrough, so we have a hodgepodge of things. Whatever you like, you know, you want a little bit of this, a little bit of that, you know, any suggestions, let us know. So thank you for watching. Huge thank you 
to be wildcat 2 great guy and yeah so thank you for watching this is jennifer gaming i'm out